Good morning. <laughs> Let me get my coffee. Much better, much better. get a clean comb because y'all see this head of mine a mess have some updates for you guys uh, I have no idea how I'm even going to title this video how I'm going to get through this video but because I said I was gonna make an effort to actually vlog and take you on my day-to-day -day, my behind the scenes good bad ugly and indifferent I'm going to be sharing this with you guys so just for the sake of this conversation, I'm putting on Jamaican castor oil on my hairline. Cause you guys know I had braids while I was training for my, or working out. And it kind of did a number on me, girl. So yeah, um, like I said, I'm not sure how I'm gonna even title this video today. So depending on how the title is, you may already know what this video is about. Last, let me see, last August, like right after my birthday, I was in the shower. You know, I was doing my thing in the shower. <laughs> and as I was washing, I noticed that I had a lump on my breast. And so I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. So then I was like, okay, let me actually like do a thorough examination so I did the warm arm up and started you know patting around and all of that and that is when I noticed that it was an actual little lump like it was something there it wasn't like excessive um, breast tissue so I said no this is like actually something you know inside of here so I immediately started praying um, yeah, just like praying, girl. I was talking about like prayer, praying without ceasing, like praying, honey. And where's my hair oil? I gotta get it together, y'all. Um, I'm actually, I'm just telling y'all what I'm using too. We're gonna make this tutorial in a, <laughs> in a vlog. I'm using the Care Care Dry Itchy Glossifier. It looks like this. They do sell it at some hair stores, but you know, I get my stuff from the professional store, but whatever. You can find it. Go to Sally's. Um, and so, I immediately went to prayer about it. Um, made an appointment the next morning. Went in. So I went in, they actually, they did the exam and then they sent me to a specialist. The breast specialist said that I needed a biopsy. Did the biopsy and I had to actually do a mammogram. Um, and that's when they put your breast in this machine and they basically just smash your breast <laughs> like it's a watermelon, honey. So they smashed it from this angle, from the side. I was holding it like this. I was holding a nipple up like this. <laughs> it was like a whole to do. So I did that. And then after they did the mammogram, they had to send me for a biopsy. The biopsy was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm not even, I ain't even gonna hold you. They basically took, I was laying in the bed like I was when I had an ultrasound <laughs> when I was pregnant. So I was laying in the bed, the nurse came in she did some stuff and then the doctor came in and he basically calmed my nerve because by that point I was already like in tears and he just said you know we're just going to numb you with some local anesthetic which was lidocaine and epinephrine and 
they numbed my area. They put a needle inside. Uh, no, sorry, they put like a, I don't even want to say a syringe because it sounds like, but they put like a little small device inside of the breast and then they took a really small needle and they put that inside of the tube to extract the sample for analysis. So they did that and it basically came back as a fibromyoma, which is excessive breast tissue. I'll leave it in the description box because sometimes I say it wrong, sometimes, you know. So I'll leave it in the, in the description box so you guys can research it. Um, in the event this sounds like something that you may be experiencing but it came back as fibromyoma however fi they are normally benign which means they are non-cancerous in my case the cells were a little bit abnormal so they wanted me to monitor it and if I decided to take it out I could when he said that they were abnormal that alone was just like gotta go so remember this was last August it is now September the following year and while we were going through COVID I started to notice that the mass was growing extremely fast but again we were, we were in COVID and we were in the pandemic when we were on lockdown they weren't doing any surgeries that were not deemed emergency and of course I was scared to go out and do anything anyway but I will definitely say for the sake of this video if we had to measure out the size when it first when I first found it it was probably about a size of a skittle right now it's about it's about right now it's the size of a walnut so it has grown significantly uh, within the past 10 months uh, and so today I am I mean, clearly I'm at work, but today I am going to be leaving work early because I have to have my follow-up exam with my doctor because I have to have it removed. Not only because it's growing at a really large rate, but it's also starting to bother me. So what that means is when I lay down, I don't wear any clothes ever. <laughs> when I'm home, like I never have clothes on. Um, so when I lay down to go to bed, I don't have any clothes on. And so I can't, I lay on my stomach and it starts to get really uncomfortable because it's a mask there. And like, I would have to like turn this way or turn this way or use one of my body pillows to pop myself up or take my breast and hold it over here. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very uncomfortable for me. And so I have to talk to him about scheduling an appointment to have it removed. Um, ooh, sorry. <laughs> it is, it's very emotional because you don't know, one of my mom, um, you don't know, you know, what it can be, especially for me now because it has grown so fast and it's so big. And, you know, they said before, you know, abnormal and blah, blah, blah. It's just a really scary time. So although I am still, you know, kind of on a high from me winning my competition and being Miss New Jersey, um, in the back of my mind, I still worry about, you know, the situation with my breasts because, like I said, it's grown so fast over the last almost year now of me discovering it because that was August. So yes, you know, it's technically it's like September 3rd today. Um, so it's grown so fast that now, you know, it makes me worry. So let me sip some coffee, child. Mm. Take a breath. And so um, that's what I'm gonna be doing today after I get this hair together because like I said, I have a, um, this weekend I have two more photo shoots that I have to do. Chuck, you know what? I think I'm just going to curl it actually. So I'm going to straighten my leave out and then I'm just curl the ends. I'm not going to flat on it. Um, let's get back into this video. Also, when I flatten or straighten my leave out, I use Nairobi. It's a curling wax. Um, 
also known as pressing cream. So when you press your hair out, the actual pressing comb, this is what I use. Um, so yeah, so that is um, my today, my to-do list for today. Um, it's not anything fun. It's not exciting. It's not Miss New Jersey, yada, yada, yada. It's real life. And so I think that this is a really good opportunity to show that it is not always sunshine and rainbows and in my case skittles it's walnuts so that's on my agenda today if i have the heart or the mindset to take my camera into my doctor's appointment i will because again i know that these types of things affect everyone and so if this vlog can help someone else who is dealing with this um, it's always worth it for me because I know again somebody is always benefiting from me sharing my story and so this is a part of my story so let me finish my hair and then probably when I come back I'm going to be on my way to the doctor's office and um, hopefully I can take you guys with me so yeah yeah I'm going to I'm going to curl it Alright, we're going to turn this vlog into something happy. No sadness today. We are going to be using, I have my stove on to use for curling irons, but I'm going to be pressing my hair out so I have my pressing comb inside of there now. And I'm going to use my actual curling iron instead of my flat iron to curl my hair. Just got to be educational, right? So. Although flat irons give you curls, you'll never get the same amount of body that you will with a curling iron, curling, <laughs> flat iron curl iron. Let me start this over. So although we use our flat irons all the time to give us curls and all of that, you'll never get the same amount of body in the hair unless you use a curling iron instead of the flat iron. One, because it's made to flatten out the hair and because, you know, it has the round edges, that's where we get that curl from. But you get volume by the hair at the root, from the hair at the roots. So you get that body, uh, so you get that body by achieving, you would get, okay, let me sip my coffee because I'm clearly, mm-mm, mm-mm. As a matter of fact, I need to, let me turn my, um, Wax and wax machine on because this right here, mm -mm. it ain't it, sis. It ain't it. Okay. All right. So my waxing machine is on because these eyebrows ain't loyal, and my pressing comb is getting hot. I smell it burning. Yes, I burn. This flat iron is about honestly. This flat iron is about 14 years old. <laughs> so you see the wood is all burnt up, but it's the best pressing comb ever, ever. So yeah, you burn your um, pressing combs because when you burn it, it helps to maintain the heat and you can use it longer. I'm giving y'all all the secrets today. Anyway, so instead of me using my flat iron to curl my hair, I'm gonna use my, actually, my actual curling iron to do that because you're gonna get more body in the curls and it helps the curl set better, so. FYI, even though you can use a flat iron to curl your hair, if you have a curling iron, use that instead. Tell, I'm telling you, the curls are going to be so much better. So I'm going to use that. But, okay. So my curling iron, is it on? It is on. Okay, so we're going to use that in a few minutes. And let me take this pressing cone out the stove. You see it's smoking? I'm trying to burn the house down, child. And I already put my pressing cream on. Ooh, them braids. That's all right, it's coming back. So I see this, a mess, a mess. Okay, let's fix, let's fix this.
See? Much better, right? I also forgot to tell you guys. So today, last night, I need to get my whole life together. So I actually sat down to do my schedule for the month, even though it's clearly September. I had to fix it or update my schedule. So I had the photo shoot last weekend, which was great. The um, pictures came back and it was pictures for, well, I shouldn't say for anything, honestly, it was just because I like to take pictures. <laughs> I like to take pictures. So, you know, I always have use for them, but I wanted to have a picture with my crown on my head with the dress that I wore when I won my title because that night it was so much going on. It was like, you know, that show was a few hours. My hair was flat, makeup was cried off my face. So I wanted to take pictures. So I recreated the makeup and I recreated the entire look that I won in and took headshots with my actual crown on. So those pictures came out so pretty. I'm really happy with everything. But this weekend I want to do more headshots and then I'm taking pictures with the three women who are part of, as we call the Queen's Court. Those are all of the women who won with me. So remember, my pageant had two categories for the misses. So it's Miss America, which was me. And then they started another category or subdivision within that. And that is called Mrs. American with the N on the end. And it's basically everyone who was the first runner up, they have their own pageant now. So it's a really great opportunity in case you did not actually win Mrs. America, you still get your own pageant. You still were able to be crowned because it's not, it's not easy. And it's a lot of women who compete over and over and over again. And they may like miss by like one point or two points. And so now it allows them the opportunity to follow their dream as well. Do you see how different my hair looks now when you press out that leave out? Ooh, child. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Okay. So now we're just going to curl the ends a little bit. Just a little bit. And call it a day. So that's the second photo shoot that we're going to be doing. It's going to be with um, my Miss American, my first runner up. Her name is Christina. She's really cute. Um, so Miss Christina, and then we have LC. She is our Miss America. So it's called Miss for America. So she is our Miss. So it's going to be all three of us, and we're going to do something really fun. Just pictures with all of us. We are the Jersey girls. So we're going to take our own little photo shoot, have some fun with that. And then, like I said, I'm going to take additional photos, just something that's a little more editorial, avant-garde, over the top. Like, yes, honey, feathers and boas and <laughs> something like that. Something really fun. So that's going to be this weekend. So that's why I said I'm not really trying to do too much to this head of mine. Because I already done burnt the hair to death, child. Like, I burnt it to death. Now, I can promise y'all, next time y'all see me after I finish this, this hair is going to be in a clip. <laughs> So I'm doing all this for nothing, but I came in kind of early this morning because I wanted to clean the salon bathroom because I did not do it before I left last night. And y'all know COVID is real. And I will say something, y'all. I've been, I've had my salon now seven years. God be the glory. I've had it for seven years. And although previous to me, opening my own salon I managed the salon for a short period of time and I tell you when you become a business owner you realize you realize one how inconsiderate people can be you realize how how would I say this about being rude how nasty people can be um I mean it's un it's it's unfathomable some of the stuff that I have uncovered as a business owner, especially as a female business owner operating a, for the most part, female salon. I mean, I do have men who I service, but for the most part, it's women. 
but the things that people leave in my bathroom, the pee, things that people leave in my on my dryers, the things that people leave in my salon sinks, the things that they try to flush, the, the, just like Lord, why, why Jesus? So that's that. So I had to clean my bathroom and sanitize my salon chairs. And when I finish this, I have to clean my mirror because I have some water stains. I don't know what I was doing. That's a mess. So that's it guys. I'm not gonna talk your ears off. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Wait, wait, wait. So you guys know the other day, I was on a mission trying to find that perfume. So mama did not have a chance to go to King of Pressure Mall to get it. I did get the Ariana Grande Cloud. Smells so good, I'm wearing it today. But yesterday, me and my client talking and she goes, girl, I got this perfume, I got this perfume. I said, oh shoot. As soon as I tried to forget about buying perfume, she started talking about it and I went online and I ordered three. Uno, dos, tres. Tres, am I saying it right? Uno, dos, tres. Tres <laughs> perfumes. Like, I need to get a grip on myself. But like I told you guys, I am celebrating this win and I am gonna be milking this cow to death, honey. My sister-in-law already sick of me. I forgot I was supposed to put rose petals in front of her house. She gonna kill me. <laughs> okay, so that's good. So this one, we are going to clip. Put that there.
All right. Right, so I'm going to leave this here for a few minutes. Like I said, I already know that these curls are not going to be here by the time I go to my doctor's office, but I'm cute now, so <laughs> that's, that's all we got. Um, I sh you know what? I might I'll put a little bit of hairspray in it. Look, I'm using got to be, so just hit that. Hit that a little bit. All right, I can take this side down. And you already see my natural hair already starting to frizz. My hair just be, girl, just hit it like that real quick. See, that's the look we're going for. That's how it's supposed to look, right? Again, it's not gonna look like this <laughs> later, but it's cute now, you know? Okay, and this is how I fluff it up. So now, I'm gonna take a few selfies <laughs> for Instagram while my hair look cute, and then when I see you guys later, it's gonna be in the clip, and I'll be on my way to the doctor. So I'll see you guys soon. All right, you guys, my camera died. <laughs> so I'm waiting for the doctor to come in. Um, yeah, I just, just swing your feet. <laughs> swing, 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 swing. So um, yeah, wait for the doctor to come in and see what happens. Like I said, I am here to discuss possible um, removal but I feel like he's probably gonna make me get another ultrasound of the lump because it has grown so much. So that is what we're gonna find out. My blocking camera died, so I'm on my phone. And um, yeah, I feel much better. I had some food, so I hope I don't cry. I should be okay. Um, but yeah, it was. I guess I think it was too early in the morning earlier for me to have that conversation because baby, um, so yeah, I'm just waiting for the doctor to come in. He was running a little bit behind. And we shall see what happens. So I'm hoping for a good report. Um, and we'll go from there. And we're on the left side. Mm -hmm. We call that a left breast lumpectomy. That means just removing the lump. Okay. Uh, wisest way to, to handle this mm -hmm. would be to get the breast lump out to make sure it is benign. Okay. To make sure it doesn't need a wider excision because okay. it's a low-grade cancer. We 